Hello everyone and uh, welcome to Search Magic Show and uh, welcome to cloudnative.tv. Uh, so this is the Search Magic Show. My name is Sayan Patak. I am a CNCF ambassador working as director of technical evangelism at SIBO. Uh, so before we start, uh, this is an official live stream of CNCF and as such is subject to CNCF code of conduct. Please do not add anything uh, to the chat or questions that would be in violation to that code of conduct. Uh, basically, please be respectful of all your fellow participants and presenters. So uh, those of who, uh, those of you who are new to the uh, stream, uh, so this is a search magic show. And here we dive into the Kubernetes certifications, uh, which is CKA, CKA, CKS, some of the concepts. And uh, then we do some some practical scenarios, see some hands on, uh, see some tips and tricks, uh, and uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much uh, you know uh, about the show. Uh, so I'll share the playlist uh, for the show if you have missed any of the previous episodes, uh, which is uh, actually interesting. So this is the fifth one in the series. Uh, we have done four episodes till now. The episode one covered uh, the introduction to Kubernetes certifications, why they are important, what are they, uh, how how you prepare yourself, uh, how you prepare your mindset for that, uh, you know, for the certifications. Uh, day two, we covered the Kubernetes architecture and installation using KubeADM uh, and uh, the Cryo. Uh, day three, we covered Kubernetes objects, uh, deployments, uh, and, and all the other things, uh, the pods, deployment, replica sets, and so on. Day four, uh, for the episode four, we uh, covered the taints and toleration in detail. Uh, yeah, and in day three, we also covered the scheduling aspects, like how to schedule, uh, you know, using node name, node selector, and all those things. Uh, day four, we covered about taints and tolerations, uh, what are taints, what are tolerations, and some of the use cases. And today, uh, in today's episode, we'll be uh, covering the services and uh, the ingress. So uh, there are different types of Kubernetes services uh, where which you can expose that you can expose your pod deployment uh, to a service. Uh, and obviously uh, I have Brad, which I'll introduce in a moment. I know you are eager. Uh, so uh, we have like services and ingress, uh, which Brad will be talking about, uh, you know, uh, from his experience of the certifications, how you should learn from the Kubernetes documentation, uh, some of the sample uh, scenarios and questions uh, and uh, some of the tips and tricks. So would be pretty interesting. Uh, before that, I would like to share one of the articles that uh, uh, Brad, uh, you know, um, shared have written already. So let me paste that in the chat. So this is basically, uh, you know, the the tips and tricks for CKA, CKAD exam tips, uh, very neatly written. Uh, so that's why I recommend, highly recommend you go through that uh, blog as well. So it's basically overall for CKA, CKAD, but today we'll be focusing on uh, your services and ingress. Uh, and just before I introduce Brad, uh, make sure you follow cloudnative.tv because uh, it's not only like search magic show that happens. Uh, there are plenty of show that keeps on running throughout uh, the week uh, on cloudnative.tv. So make sure you hit that follow button. Uh, so uh, welcome you all to the stream. Today I'm joined by Brad and uh, he's joining in from New Zealand. It's uh, 3 a.m. Uh, for him. So thank you so much for tuning in. I mean, that's really wonderful. You could make time. Uh, I mean, this this odd timing and you could, you know, uh, do this for the community. Really, really, really appreciate that. A big round of applause in the chat uh, for those who are listening. Please give that to uh, Brad a big shout out. Uh, so Brad, please introduce yourself to the community. Hi everyone, um, I'm Bram McCoy, I'm the head of cloud engineering for a company called Moolah in Australia. Um, been working with Kubernetes for probably two or three years now. Um, done a lot of open source as well um, with projects like Argo CD, Helm, um, Calico, yeah, pretty much a, a lot of them. And um, also have my CK and CKD. So um, I really enjoy helping people pass as well for a few of my engineers through it. So hopefully you can get a lot of out of today's session. 
Yeah, just before we begin, uh, one one small thing. So in every stream, we give away two uh, certification vouchers, which uh, which gives you basically the codes, which give you fifty percent discount on any of the certification. Uh, so I'll be just choosing them. Uh, I choose them randomly. So you have to stay till the end of the stream. Second thing is you have to be interactive in the chat. So according to me, who whosoever will be the most interactive one uh, in the chat and keep you know keep uh, the interactions going on, I'll pick uh, those two winners. So very simple. Uh, so make sure you keep the chat interactive and you might win one of the vouchers uh, for the certification. So with that, Brad, uh, your screen is up and over to you. Okay. So I've just prepared a few files and have my channel already. So what we'll do today is we'll we'll use the documentation and the terminal because in the exam that's what we'll be seeing so generally in the exam i have two screens so i have one screen will be for the exam portal and then the other one for, is for the documentation so um some a lot of people don't know that you can have two screens so um it, it really helps your efficiency in the exam so i, I recommend that you have yeah one for your documentation one for your terminal and then another thing is um, if we go to the documentation as well, you can also bookmark your pages. So as you're studying, what, what I do is I normally study with, you know, there's a lot of other courses and things you can do. And then once you've learned everything and you're comfortable, only refer to the documentation and bookmark every single page with meaningful bookmarks. And then when it comes to exam time, you, you'll be able to really fast go to the, the things that you need. And then that will help you because the time will go very, very um, fast. So as much time as you can save in the exam that you're going to need. So um, one thing I, this is sort of my Bible in the exam. Um, the first time I did my exam, I failed. And um, that was probably due to time. So I was doing too many YAML files. So the second time around when I passed, I really focused in on imperative commands over declarative because I was wasting a lot of time. And a lot of the things today we'll, um, we'll do imperatively because we want to save as much time. Um, and they generally, when you type out YAML files, you can do mistakes and then that causes a lot of time as well so um, you can see here that uh, I've just started by bookmarks um, as I'm doing the CKS now I'm going to start re-indexing my bookmarks to what's relevant for that course so for today I will add them as I go and, and just sort of get into a habit of always updating your bookmarks um, and, and that's going to help you so services there's three well there's more than three but the three main ones are cluster ip node port and load balancer so the first one cluster ip that exposes a service which is only accessible from within the cluster node port exposes services via a static port on each node's ip which we can see diagram and then we have load balancer as well so load balancer is going to expose the service via the cloud provider's load balancer. So um, we'll also talk about ingress because if you have multiple services, then you wouldn't want to pay for a load balancer for each one, for example, in the cloud. Um, so we'll see how using ingress, you can have one entry point to your cluster and then that can act to the to go to the other services. So, yeah, we're always good into the talk. So, if we just go back to the high level services, um, we can see in here the, the document's really, really good. Um, very impressed by the team like this. Um, it, it's really, really good and helps you on the test. So, you can see here um, if you ever forget how to do a service as well, you can just simply go there and then copy and paste it to your editor as well. So for one tip that I highly recommend, if you don't know uh, the editor, learn it. If, if you're using Nano, then that's 
uh, you're going to waste a lot of time. You know, you can use Nano. You can set the variable compared to even Nano. But I would highly recommend going through and going to all the because that's really going to save you know, time. We'll, we'll, we'll use that soon. I'll give you some tips and tricks on that. So, so yeah, la labels are quite an important thing for services as well because that when you have a pod that will have its own labels and maybe how the service can find to know where to fight, like where to go to that pod because it's called the select event. So if my pod has a selector called app my app on the service, this is going to go find the new pod with a selector app equals my app. Um, so, so it's in the exam, sometimes they try to trip you up and they'll have YAML files that don't work and you have to go and figure out what's wrong with them. So um, generally it'll be things like um, service and spell wrong or the API version is they can lead to just to trip you up. Um, so a, a big one to check and, and for troubleshooting services and bots is always check your selectors and labels because that's one of the most vital things. And then you have your ports as well. So um, target port, you have, uh, that's what the, the pod's listening on. So you can see here it's 926 and then port 80 is um, what it can be reached on. So for node port, there's also uh, another port called node port. If you don't specify it, then Kubernetes will create it for you. And that's the specific higher port rank we've got, which we'll look at as well. And then let's keep going through. You can see um, multiple services as well. So for some services, you need to expose more than one port. Kubernetes will let you configure multiple port of different chips. So I've had to do this as well before, where the application will be listed on two. You can see here that's uh, HTTP and HTTP. So that, that's, yeah, a little bit on just high level overview of the services. Um, see no port there as well. So that was the default range I was talking about there. If you, if you don't specify that, then it could be just do it. And you can see, yeah, that's how the mode port service uh, works. So the services, they're, they're pretty similar in the definition file. Um, doing different things. And then here you can see the load balancer as well. So Kubernetes will um, provision for you a load balancer in the cloud. So when you specify a load balancer, they will go and do the hard work and, um, and provision the, the load balancer for your service. So that's it there. And then the cool thing is we've um, got some uh, good diagrams here for ingress. So what is ingress? So ingress exposes HTTP and HTTP routes from outside the cluster to services in the cluster. So you can see here that the client is coming through, the ingress um, deployment, uh, let's, in the exam, generally it's, well, it's just Nginx. So Nginx is a nice easy one to practice with in your own cluster. Um, when I'm practicing my Docker desktop, but there's many other ways to practice on your the local. I find Docker desktop because it does everything for me. I can say this and then quick that um, I'll, I'll, I'll show you later on how to do that. But all your traffic will go to the ingress, and then you have the routing rule, which will be you can either use host path or you can use path, and then Kubernetes will. Um, know which service to then route that traffic to and then therefore the pods so it goes into service pods 
and you can obviously have more than one service and more than one pool. And when you get into the real world, things like Serve Manager and external database, which is a really awesome tool. So Serve Manager will make all the certification for you and then external database as well will update your database. So you don't have to do that. So you can specify that in that address. If, if we have time at the end, um, I'll go over that just as a, a cool thing to see, but that's not really in the exam curriculum, so I, I, I won't do that at the start. So if, if there is any questions about Ingress at the moment, um, please let me know. Um, otherwise, I'll sort of continue on to more practical stuff. Um, ingress is a little bit scary at the start, but one, once if you just focus on the ingress object that you're making, it, it becomes, you know, it, it's it's quite simple. It, it, it can be scary, but practice, practice, practice is, um, is good for it. And the more you practice, the, the faster we'll be on the day for your exam. Um, it talks here about having an ingress controller as well. So um, to deploy the ingress controller, um, you can do really simple stuff as well. So, um, yeah, just kubectl apply, and then that was for the Docker desktop version. So you can just Google install Nginx Kubernetes, very simple, and then you would get that deployed inside your cluster straight away. Um, this is what an ingress resource looks like. So this is minimal ingress, you generally don't need to know too much more, but um, this is one example using path where you can actually use host as well, which we'll, we'll see soon. So um, annotations are a very important thing once you start using um, you start using things like cert manager, external DNS, um, especially for there's a lot of things you need to do if you use like static page apps like react um, sometimes you have to change the rewrite target um, for example if you have a path see here is test path but then in your react you have different paths as well you have to do a little bit of rewriting as well which can be a little bit tricky but um, generally it's pretty straightforward and then you can see here that we're saying with this ingress um, so it doesn't specify a host so to find out what your ingress controller is you can say kubectl um, okay get service and then I, I think a good tip is dash capital a instead of um, all, that's typing out all namespaces is quite long so you can just go like that and then that's gonna um yeah you can see this is actually my azure one i'll just i'll go back to my docker desktop so i've got examples stay in gcp um azure and generally they will work on docker desktop because i'm going to assume that people don't have the cloud um, so if i just say config get context just to make sure i'm in the right one docker desktop yep yeah. i'll this over here so it's a bit easier and then and then you can see here that this is my ingress controller so that's deployed that into the namespace of ingress uh, dash nginx and then my external ip is localhost so we know that in this case um, my host is localhost so if i've got local host dash test path that will then go to the service name of the test um, so local host dash test path and then that will go in to to go to my service like we've seen up the top here so um, my rule is test path in this case um, some other tips as well so like when you're looking for like I always use the shorthand aliases instead of typing out services, I'll do SVC. So a great tip in the exam, if, if you're nervous 
sometimes you know you forget things it's really good to um, know of one easy command you can do so it's um, first of all you can also use alias as well so uh, to save time I go alias k equals kubectl now in the ckd it's easier to do this sometimes in the ck you, it can actually confuse you more because if you have to go into different um, nodes or something you lose the alias so sometimes that can trip you up if you type k and it's like what is k so it, it's debatable if you should do the alias uh, yeah it, it's 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 up to you if you do it but just remember in ck you, you are going in and out of nodes a little bit more so sometimes i found that this didn't help me as much for that so and then if i go um api uh, my, uh, API resources so with this command it's going to tell me every single um, shorthand thing for services so you can see um, yeah obviously deploys deployments RS replica sets that, that's going to save you crucial time in the exam as well so save the service counts that, that's a really good trick it's just kubectl API resources um, that's how I got the SBC name before. And then uh, another good one as well, if you're creating something, you can say like this, like run, and then I might want to say help because um, this will save you time too. So if, if you want to create a deployment in a service or even if you want to create a service as well. So if I say, um, let's go here so let's say create service and then you can see here cubes detail create service and then you're going to have options so um let's see what the help gives us for that create service yeah help and then you know that that's going to give you a lot of hints if, if an exam day is a little bit nervous and then you do have someone watching you um, the whole time so if you do forget little things that help command will really help you just go ah okay that's right um, I need to specify uh, that it's a node port service um, so yeah in summary you have API resources um, and help to, to help you on the day if you forget them um, which, which are really good so back to ingress um, pretty straightforward um, you can if you ask to create an ingress ob object you can even um, I generally just copy and paste that as well so copy and paste that in and then um, you can change it based on the the question so the exam portal you will have the question on I think the left side and then you have a terminal in the middle so you can see the question and one other tip I recommend is that um, sometimes the namespaces that you have to use, they're really weird names. So always copy and paste. Um, don't try and type it out because if you type the wrong thing, then you might lose points because you did the wrong namespace or something. So um, it, it's important to read the exam guide because the copy and paste are a little bit different. It could be shift insert, but they will tell the exam doctor will tell you that before you start so it's something like shift into shift to loop for a copy and paste but that, that, that will tell you that on the day one other thing on the day as well is that you you can't have anything on your desk or anything so um clear glass of water um have good internet camera um microphone because they will um be watching you all the time um so yeah, here we can see, let's look for a host bar file. I have one, but this is good documentation too. To, if you're ever confused about something not working, you can see the request paths and, and see what matches and what doesn't. Um, host name wildcards. So here you can see we're using host. So we're using host and bar. So let's take one example, which we'll show you soon is if you have, um, let's say, your website is bar.com, 
we want to have a subdomain called foo. So it's going to say when someone types in foo.bar.com, that's going to then, uh, if we have a path dash bar on the end of it, that's going to route us to the service one. And, and that's running on port 80 as well. So you can, you, you always have to specify the, the port with the service as well. And then for the wildcard as well, um, anything with a, a subdomain on that, then it will, um, it will go to service two as well. So, so that's that's pretty much high level what we do. We'll, we'll start to do some practical stuff now as well, but just remember the documentation always, is always your Bible. And whenever you're studying, um, always bookmark the pages. So um, the, there's good uh, pages on troubleshooting services as well. So I highly recommend to go through that as well. And, and that will really help you. So um yeah you can have it in chrome and just obviously you add bookmark and then you're having this index of all all the things that you look at so if i wanted to do service i know that every time when i'm doing the practice um i like to do the the terminal you know when you're practicing you're, you're doing practical examples all the time and then instead of once you're happy with the course instead of referencing back to the course go for the documentation because you're going to have to learn how to find your way through the documentation because um, you're not going to have the course on the day. So, um, yeah, you can see just bookmark the page, call it something meaningful. You can do it in numbers or uh, zero one service or just like that's fine for me. So that's probably one of the best tips is that you can use bookmarks on the day. All right, so let's do some practical exam, uh, examples. So this is what you're going to look at a lot here. Um, any questions, please, please keep them coming. Um, more than happy to answer them as we go. Yep, no so, questions uh, so okay. far, but uh, it's 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 going well. Um, your voice is, is much much clearer uh, now and. Uh, so basically, uh, we have discussed like you know uh, the the basic uh, uh, services which are there: cluster IP, load port, load balancer. Then you have your ingress. Uh, uh, yes, you can create. Uh, I mean, you can create one ingress object, and based on different paths, you can redirect it to different services. Uh, so that that is doable. And uh, uh, yeah, let's let's basically dive into some of the practical examples and all the. Uh, tips that uh, Brad has given, uh, you know, like bookmarking is very important. Copy pasting of namespaces rather than uh, typing them to, uh, you know, uh, be safe from the typos. Uh, they are very, very important. Small ones, but uh, uh, but still very important. And also use, uh, you know, uh, hyphen capital A instead of hyphen hyphen all namespaces. It saves time because it's all about time time game when you when you are doing a, a practical exam like like you know uh, the Kubernetes certifications. So all these practical exams, you have to be very careful. You have to be uh, time bound uh, for each question. You have to be fast. You have to try to take all the possible imperative commands and the shortcuts. Uh, so for that, you have to practice, practice, and practice. Yeah. So and yeah. Sorry about uh, apart from that, uh, there is yeah. If if you go through the documentation, the documentation is a bible. Very rightly said, uh, because documentation gives you in detail, uh, you know, uh, explanation of all the all the things which are there. Uh, if, if you go to the services documentation, you will see like there is a headless service as well where the cluster IP is none, although that is uh, something which is out of scope from the uh, certification perspective, but uh, it, it is there. So like this, you will find, I mean, the de a lot of details. That is why like people tend to go for certain courses because they, you know, they try to skim down uh, the, the documentation into, into fewer concepts because obviously when you go through the docs, it will be in detail. Uh, but the examples uh, that are there in the documentations they are really really neat and uh, you know uh, you can easily copy paste and then edit some of these stuffs to make your work and or you whatever you are seeing on the screen right now uh, you can directly you know uh, see all these sample commands and uh, start using them uh, for your initial uh, like initial thing and then hyphen hyphen dry run hyphen or client is, is something that gives you the yaml and then you uh, you know export that and, and uh, edit that and then apply that 
So like this, uh, try to have all the shortcuts in place in mind and in practice in this scenario because you are preparing for the search. Sure. Yep. Apologies if the, the voice wasn't coming through um, clear before. I'll, I'll try to speak a bit louder as well. So um, reverse search is an easy one as well because you'll generally do um, the same commands as well. So um, you can type control R will give you reverse search and then you know you can say okay this is the service I run for. So um, so you can you can do that as well like what we're talking about also and then already you've got your command ready. So this is for creating a deployment, for example. So um, you can see here, I'm using dry run equals client, uh, which won't execute the command on Kubernetes. It will do um, what's called a dry run. So, and you can build your YAML file um, into the terminal like that. So that, that helps me a lot on the exam as well, because sometimes, um, if you can't find here, let's say that was a deployment. So if you can't find um, the parameters, like, you know, we have label, you don't have, if you do pods, you have labels, but if you don't have labels, then you can quickly do that. And then you copy and paste it into your, um, your V editor. And then that will, um, that will, that will help you to, to speed up instead of having to type it out. So I'll probably stick more to services and English just at the moment and because we don't want to waste time and then I'll go over tips again. But essentially for V, if you want to say in the exam as well, I generally, when I build my YAML files, I call it the, the question number, just so if I need to come back to it, I can, I know. So if I was doing, uh, let's say O1 and then deployment.yaml and then one thing some people don't know how to get out of there so you can just press um, so there's two modes there's insert mode and edit mode so at the moment i'm in insert mode so um, let's say here i want to create a service for example i can just copy this here and then because i'm an insert you can press i for insert or escape to get out of it and then um, i can just copy that in, make some changes if I want. And then um, one, one, some good things as well is if you have to press I, let's say I have a line I don't want, or even two lines. Um, let, let's say here, if I go to escape mode and I type DD, that will remove the whole line. So, so say like 100 DD, that will get rid of 100 lines. So that, that's a good tip to use if you want to Get rid of things as well and then to save it as well you can press escape and then um, q exclamation mark to get out or you can just use um, w exclamation mark like that and then that's going to save the file so then you can see here that my file will be there saved and then i can reference that as the question if, if i don't think that i got it right i'm going to come back to check my work i know that the portal and see one Okay, this is what I did for this answer. You can also describe it as well, but um, that's generally a faster way. But you can on your files. So um, let, let's get started. So with this one, I get all oh, so it's mixed, so I've got a namespace called Search Magic for this um, here, so we can see that I have a deployment. Um, I won't worry about creating this deployment again because that's not in the scope of this today. Well, I'll focus more on the ingress and service. So um, this is Docker Desktop. So my uh, ingress controller is going to be localhost. So let's get rid of the service. So um, the service and service cluster ID. Because uh, I could have specified my next ways. Okay. Um, okay. 
So we have a deployment. Um, let's quickly show what the deployment is doing. So um, uh, just give it. So you can give it a subscribe. And let's inspect it to see. Um, you might get a question saying, "Create a service with." So. And then uh, YAML. So here we can see that we have two labels. So labels are very important. We have app, so it's actually good for that. environment it's production as well. So if we want to create a service for this as well, you can come here and this is what I've done to create this particular job, by the way. And then you can use the expose command. I find the expose command for service is really easy because the kubectl will do all the hard work for you. So if you look here at expose, you can, you can do it two ways. You can either create or you can create expose as well. I, I like to do expose because I like them to do most of the work for me. And then you can see here, so yeah, always refer to here because it's very easy. And then I think it's create a new run, so dry run as well. So in this case, I just want to look at this and say 180. So it's quite easy. Yeah, I know it is. So if we hit it, we can set the point of search object. So name search. So okay. Um, you can also set the namespace in your cube context as you are, uh, if you want as well. I generally don't use that. And then see how it exposed that as well. So what I what I forgot to do is actually add another label. I was going to do a dry run and label, but we so just go and get it as well. So get it. Um, you probably have to edit services on that as well. So now, now let, let's see when we go to expose. Let, let's see what we have. So we can see here that we've got one called name search page uh, namespace. So let's go into that. Service. You can really leverage the commands that you found already um, using the search as well. And then the search language. And then, see, I'm, I'm, this is an editor as well, so that's why it's very important to tonight. Um, actually, because we, we specified the deployment. Kubernetes did everything for us, so they actually add both labels as well. So it's so much easier to create the service to expose. And then you can see it's all right. Um, everything's done, we want to create the so that's fine. So that's an example of the cluster IP service. Um, what we'll do now is we'll do an ingress object for that. So we're going to go and do that And let's see if we have. Yep, so we can see the big one here. So um, let's let's inspect this and see what we can. And then to specify the ingress. And then here we can see the, what I might do is I'll, I'll put it up here as well. So, so this is the minimum one as well. 
So very simple. We can see that um, I, I always put namespace in the YAML file if I make it as well because that just protects me if I forget to specify a QCTL um, namespace. That will be a fallback. The YAML file will pick that up. So that's something I personally do in the exam as well because I always specify at the namespace here just as a, a safety. Um, see the, here we're using a um, path and, and that's just um, like the root part of it. So in the service that we created before, it says make a cluster IP and then I know that my, so for the cluster IP, we just have the two ports, the target port and the port, and then what I want the address to do. So when we go, um, let's get back onto this diagram again. So we're saying that when we go into localhost, just localhost, it's going to route to the service that we made for the search metric. So that's all how you do it. You can deploy that, and there's, we can do host and stuff as well. Um, this is the most basic one. And then uh, I'm going to get out of that. And then here we can see that if we go localhost on here, okay, so service is typically unavailable. So that's the why. So it's good for troubleshooting. So uh, that when you're troubleshooting as well, you can, um, it's either start from the finish or the start so you can work your way up pod service ingress or you know contain pod service ingress or you can work down from ingress service pod so it's generally not going to start in the middle so let's see why we have an error so the error is service typically available um, maybe a uh, problem that let's Let's see that first. So if I go to the service all, okay, we know that we have the Nginx namespace, we have um, the controller and localhost. So first of all, let's quickly see if log same. Um, this will be good for more the CA. So logs, and I can say. that generally always sits in a different um, its own namespace. So 503 here obtaining inputs for service. Okay. And so here for obtaining inputs for service. So we know that we're going to search magic cluster IP. So let's look at our uh, let's see the our services as well. Let's make sure that they are. Um, so in our ingress ob object, let's describe it. Let's see what matters. It's minimal. We have host star. So let's start it. Yeah, this one went back. So we can see here that, yep, that's our service name. So it's magic cluster IP number 80. Okay. So there's no reason that should work. Now let's look at the services as well. And then let's go to our, our service name. Oh, okay. So 
can see here we've got probably the, the service name we're saying to see here we're saying in the ingress the service cluster IP where we don't actually have that service it's named something different so um, this could be like a question for trip shop as well so when troubleshooting then you can see where I went from ingress down so uh, what we can do there we can we can do that one there doesn't really matter um, it's exposed at different that's exposed in deployment so back to the docs um, down here um, probably actually going to have the opportunity to do that. So reverse search. Expose that one there. And then uh, let's do a dry run. Let's do an example dry run this time. Update it. Try run equals client, and then uh, you can either output it. Like one thing you can do is output it, and let's say this is question one. So I might just say um, one service young, for example. See here that made my service, and then let's go maybe service young. Okay. Oh, sorry, I must have typed that wrong. So that's not um, the advice. It's because I didn't specify yum. I think that's what it's going. So let's just say that's two. And then now that should work. Yeah, so I didn't specify the yum. So this is my service. So the selector of the deployment and pod is going to be the app. So it's going to um, do the in environment pod. Uh, this time we'll call it the correct name. So we know that for the uh, couldn't find it. So um, dash. And, and the reason it was, was um, everything I got from today is from the documentation. So um, just, just to show you a reference of what I got, I just changed the name to around. So uh, that's, that was from the English, sorry, yeah. All right, so that is, that, that's what we can do for the service, and then we can save that. Let's run that to us, CTR, create it, and so it's, oh, sorry, two. YAML, we can see that the name space is already specified as well. So, okay, and then the service. So it's created. So you can see now that um, I just left the other one as well. We, we can either change the ingress or, or create the service. So um, now let's go see if that works. Still, still around. Okay, that's fine. So, that cluster IP. Okay. So you can see that's been wrong as well. So I'll just hit that again. And then that's creating a service. And then th this is just a lab that I did last week for Terraform for the student group, but I just made it into a doc container instead of uh, S3 bucket um, static site. So you can see now that it's all working. So that's ways, you know, I had to troubleshoot my own uh, demo, but that was actually worked out good because that's what happens in real life. You have to, to really go troubleshoot and, and not everything under pressure it's going to work for you so yeah i was under pressure then because i'm doing this demo so it was actually great um, that that happened you can 
really see how you have to think and then act fast because you don't have enough time. Like that would have saved crucial time as well. So um, yeah, in summary, the service name is wrong. So if we look at here, Ingress game, we knew that my rule was saying go to another service and that service didn't exist. So um, the Ingress didn't know what to do. Just do a 503 because it's like I don't know what the needs to do. To do it. So that's an example of the routing rule as well. Um, we can also look at the wildcard one as well. So um, let's get rid of the other. Uh, let's just see what ingress we have. Let's just delete the one for host bar because generally you need to be asked to, if you're going to do host path or path. So always get into the practice of troubleshooting. It, it, it is good to take a break. Yeah, that's a good thing. And that's what happens day to day. You always, you know, when you start, or you probably already are, but work with Kubernetes production, and that's going to happen. You have to solve those problems fast. And so let's uh, delete that. Uh, okay, so we'll delete that. So we don't have the ingress at the moment. So that was an example of just using path. So now let's use host. So for host, you can see I'm, I'm wanting to subdomain foo, and, and this is straight from the documentation as well. Um, we could have bar if we want, but let's just have use it today. And that's an example of a uh, local host um, wildcard as well. So cluster IP is right, I'm not going to do that in the same again. And so that's looking good there. So Let's deploy that and see. No, create. So I've now created this YAML file here, and then we know that if I go to food.localhost, that will come up with the same thing as well. And you can see that that's how you can do the host as well. So if you wanted to do like uh, mobile.localhost or whatever subdomain is that you want to use for your business, you can use that along the path as well. So you can specify uh, more than one service, that specifies what you want. And, and that's the beauty of the mix. So um, you don't have to do like load balances or no ports for each one. And you can, yeah. It, it's a really great thing. And then you have things like, um, I think uh, I have an example of using, uh, I won't talk about this too much because I'm examining, but um, you can use things like Cert Manager, which will um, generate my own certs for me to script and then um, use an external DNS as well. And then that will succeed. Um, when I, I use this in Data Cluster 4, you can see my host is. This is just my test domain that I use. I put a host of CNC students. Um, that does my secret domain. And then you can see that um, that will come up as well. So I've just moved that from AWS to PDB. So and that will come up as well. So that's one way that um, everything done for me that updates my route 53 entry and um, generates a certificate as well, which is quite cool. It's better than traditional other ways we do the infrastructure. Okay, so that that's um, that's pretty much it um, in terms of uh, tips. Yeah. So in summary, there's um, we we went over load balancer service, cluster IP node port. Um, we went over the ingress as well, and there's other things like the service as well. That's um, they use those for like more stateful applications like Kafka or, or something. Um, that is good to know because you probably will come across that one day. Um, not not in the test though. And then there's a few other things that I don't really want to bring up because it's not in the test. Um, but just remember that in summary, 
documentation to Bible um, when troubleshooting, go top down or bottom up. Don't start the middle. So um, when I had that problem before, you would probably just go and look at the deployment. You would either start from bottom to top, or so you'd start from you know, right down to the pod, or start from the rest. And, um, and, and that's it. I hope you've learned um, something today. And um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me as well. Yep. Uh, thank you so much, Brad, uh, for uh, the the demo and uh, explaining uh, the concept of um, ingress services uh, with the set of examples that you were having, and also like the live troubleshooting uh, that you did. Uh, some some name is mismatching, so obviously your localhost URL won't work, so it has to match with the cluster IP one that was not there. So uh, that is how it actually happens in the uh, in the practical scenario, in the exam scenario as well. Sometimes. Uh, you 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 are because you are creating a lot of things you might miss out a word or you might miss out misspell a word uh, so which might lead to such issues that uh, things are not working uh, so make sure you double check keep keep a check on you know uh, copy paste uh, most of the things uh, as and when you can uh, from the question itself and do not uh, do less less of typing uh, so that uh, you know you do not miss out uh, anything and you do not misspell anything while you are um you know submitting the the answer or, or doing uh, a particular scenario for the exam so when you explained uh, those concepts so uh, you, you learned about services today ingress today uh, how what is cluster ip within the cluster node port that uh, you can give node ip and the node port and the, the load balancer depending on the cloud controller manager uh, then you have your ingress so ingress is basically a resource for which you have to have the ingress controller and uh, once you have that, you'll be creating an ingress object, and in the in the ingress object, you can define the host, uh, just like uh, it was like uh, you can just take any example like cncf.com, and then you can specify different paths uh, like cncf.com/slash about will go to a service about, and that uh, obviously that service will be having label selectors matched to the pod and with the respective endpoints that it will go to, and uh, if it is uh, slash cncf.com slash search magic then it goes to a service called search magic so this way you can define multiple paths point into multiple services uh, so that's the kind of the ideology of ingress and in the end like uh, brad told uh, you can have uh, your different annotations that can be used in ingress you can have your uh, search manager creating your own certificates and you can have tls uh, you can have the tls as a, you can have tls host uh, so it will be like https so uh, these things are doable and um, um, uh, I hope uh, you people got some idea on on you know uh, how how things were done, how Brad was able to troubleshoot the whole scenario, create the whole scenario, uh, and uh, you with the tips and tricks. So I hope you'll be feeling confident with that. Uh, with that, uh, we'll we'll take uh, a leave now. And uh, for the winners, um, I, uh, there are two winners that I've already picked. Uh, one is uh, Pixel uh, Robots, and another one is um, Kelvin uh, Leaves. So please reach out to me on Twitter uh, so that I can DM you your uh, discount vouchers of 50% on the certifications. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in and uh, see you in two weeks. And thank you, Brad, for uh, tuning in as well. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Uh, and thank you all. Bye. Thanks very much.